chegando de mansinho. Estamos ao vivo, eu acho. Sim. Entrando ao vivo, mais um HCO chegando. Já no final da temporada. Ai, gente, final da sexta temporada. Que coisa. Quem diria que a gente ia continuar e continuar e sem menor vontade de parar. Ainda mais com uma entrevista essa que a gente vai reproduzir. Aí que você fala, não vou parar mesmo, né, Bia? Conta aí, meu amor. Boa noite. Boa noite. Eu... Eu... A gente está finalizando o ano, está acabando. Só a semana que vem é, tem... É... Episódios especiais serão do, duas partes de uma entrevista que a gente fez presencial, a primeira da história de três anos e alguns meses do Histórias com o Oxo, vai ser a primeira entrevista presencial que a gente vai fazer, depois ao final a gente fala mais um pouco sobre isso, né? E a gente está muito feliz também com esta de hoje, porque... Uh... Especial para mim, eu acho que para a Diva também, até no momento que a gente estava meio que uh, frequentando lá o Ajar, lá em São Paulo, que o Vireste passou aqui como um cometa a primeira vez, né? E... Experiências, né? Que a gente teve. E... Vez que tava Vireste, né? É, e tudo que para mim assim, tem muito significado aí uma universidade, porque. É, enfim, eu já falei duas vezes, uma na entrevista com a Tchandrika, outra com a Aprendi, histórias diferentes minhas relacionadas com o Oxo e o Viresh. E, e desde alguns episódios eu fiquei super ligado, super, super ligado. Né? Mesmo sem estar lá, mesmo uh, sem ter participado mais de atividades com eles aqui ou eles não vieram mais aqui, aconteceu muita coisa, mas eles vieram muitas vezes ao Brasil, e aquele lugar, eu gosto muito das pessoas, e aprendi que é uma... uma entrevista, né? Ai, ela é Uau. um super especial, Sim. ela é demais. Ai, gente, só, só assistindo para ver é. que, que história, que, ah, que caminho... A gente fica trabalhando, né? revisando, legenda, coisa, e assiste mais de uma vez e tal. E essa realmente tem um, um sabor especial. Eu não preciso falar mais porque vocês vão acompanhar. Eu vou dar os recados aqui enquanto as pessoas vão entrando. Certo, Didi? Certo, Biru. É... Está tudo compartilhado. Rápidos. Então, a nossa nossos agradecimentos à equipe HCO de apoio, Marita. Sim. Miguel Fein, Catarina Lira. Nossos agradecimentos aos grupos Oxo no Facebook, que é Oxo Sem Fronteiras, Gabriel Sananda, equipe. Nelson Anas da Nova Realidade, Francisco Siqueira e equipe. Nossos agradecimentos à querida Sanguinha, que está sempre conosco. Sim. Aos nossos, também aos nossos apoiadores. Sim. E... Pix, é a chave uh, nos comentários fixos que a Dívia posta ali, a gente leva esse programa com um apoio, então a gente agradece muito a todos que contribuem, qualquer contribuição é muito bem-vinda. É, é mesmo. Um recado importante e sério, a gente, nós não somos um canal oficial do Roxo, isso nos foi pedido que deixasse bem claro sempre, então, nós somos apenas um grupo de amigos que gostam de contar histórias. Histórias com quem, Diga? Poxa, <risos> o mestre, esse caminho rico, lindo de transformação. Falando em transformação, uau, a gente vai assistir agora um, uma beleza de caminho, como eu coloquei aqui nos... Nos, no título do mais mundano ao mais sagrado. Tá? Só um pouquinho antes de transmitir, 
faltou um recado. Gente, às vezes o vídeo trava, porque a gente... Uh, enfim, a transmissão do Facebook, como a gente está produzindo uma gravação, que a única forma de fazer, esclarecendo para quem não sabe, as entrevistas em inglês são gravadas e a gente coloca a legenda. Nós mesmos colocamos as legendas, a equipe HCO. Então, pode acontecer duas coisas. Às vezes a legenda fica um pouco ilegível, no original ela está perfeita, mas na transmissão pode acontecer alguma... Uh, a gente chama craquelada, né? Que ela fica meio trêmula, fica um pouquinho difícil de ler. Tá? Isso pode acontecer. A gente faz de tudo para evitar. Tem, né? Internet em cada ponto da DIV, o meu. A gente faz, tem a melhor conexão possível com, com cabo, com né? fibra ótica, tudo. Mas acontece, né? Então pode acontecer a estabilidade da travamento. E no dia seguinte ou dois dias depois, dependendo do que acontece na transmissão original nosso querido Miguel edita o vídeo, e tira as partes e coloca a entrevista original e na faz, íntegra, o, faz o recorte na íntegra. É. Então, no YouTube não tem travamento, não tem problema de legenda, está tu, tudo lá. Lindo lá, gente, playlist toda. YouTube, Divia 10, playlists, está lá. É só entrar lá, tá, tem tudo lá, melhor que Netflix. Certo? Outra Isso, coisa que pode acontecer... Dá uma perfeita acontecer... maratona. Que entrevista que é essa? Hã? Que live que é essa que a gente está fazendo hoje? <risos> hoje é o número? É. Como diria minha amiga, é... <risos> centésima, trigésima, sexta ou cento e trinta e seisima. Sextésima. <risos> é. Número 136. Então, gente, mais um recado e último, tá? Pode acontecer de haver sobreposição de legendas. Ah, tá? bom. É... Porque a gente, o vídeo que a gente vai reproduzir agora da entrevista, ele vem com a legenda já colocada em português. Só que o Facebook, às vezes, coloca a legenda em cima, pela voz, né? Programa. Programa do Facebook. Então, você tem que desativar no seu aparelho. Sim. Tá? Se tiver isso acontecendo, a gente não pode fazer nada. Só deixar uh, avisar né? para as pessoas. Se acontecer isso, é no próprio aparelho da pessoa que, que acontece. Não é algo que a gente possa resolver. Outra Dados coisa que eu gostaria... É, ah. Outra coisa que eu queria falar, gente, é que se você sentir que tem alguém que você queira passar essa live e que você já tenha falado né, sobre histórias com o Oxo, pode transmitir, pode compartilhar. E a gente, às vezes, sente que isso pode ir um pouquinho mais do que já está. Está ótimo do jeito que está, gente. Tá... A gente não faz campanha, a gente não faz nada é, monetizado. Né? E a gente cuida para que a gente fique nesse círculo amoroso, né? nesse ambiente uh, de internet, de rede social. Mas se você sente, se você quiser convidar pessoas ou sente que pode uh, contribuir para seus amigos, seus contatos, então pode compartilhar e a gente está aqui, tá bom? A gente é. agradece. É, e sobre isso, uh, é, quando você compartilha, o que já acontece aqui é como on ondas que vão se propagando na água. Às vezes tem 10, 15 pessoas assistindo e daqui a pouco a gente olha tem 300. Né? E, é. e as pessoas entram depois, enfim. Né? Então, esse grupinho que está aqui ao vivo... É legal é. que interage com a gente também, né? É, então, é boa noite a todos que estão aqui. Todo mundo que está chegando, Sarada, uma para Santo. Távia. <risos> Ai, que Francisco, lindo. do nosso Nelsanias. Jean. É, Dara. E se a Kilma. Tarasa, vamos lá? Ai, tá lindo, 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 lindo. Vamos lá, vamos mostrar. Ah, já... um último recado, só um pouquinho, ah, não esqueça. Não Veja, podemos esquecer. Essa entrevista ela, uh, teve a colaboração de duas pessoas que eu queria agradecer, que é a Sarasa e a Carunha, né? que fizeram, nos ajudaram a fazer os contatos nossas embaixatrizes do HCO. Muito obrigado. Agora vai.
<risos> Vamos lá. Beijo, gente. Até, até a volta. <risos>
the daughter of um, this Swedish friend, did it with me. And um, after one month, uh, Ganda said there's going to be a group with a man called Viresh. He comes from Holland to London to do a group and uh, you should do it. You could do it. And then I started to talk to people around and half of the people said, you know, Premdeep, uh, Viresh is someone who is so intense, so, so strong that new people should not do groups with him. Because maybe you never want to do a group again in your life because it's too strong. <laughs> Other people were saying, Viresh is so soft, so beautiful, so loving, so caring. He's amazing. It's, it's amazing to do a group with him. And then it was so opposite to each other. So I thought, I'm going to do it. So I jumped. It was a full moon. It was Easter time. And I went to do this group. And uh, Viresh arrived in the group room. And then I was like, oh. He is an interesting person. He is not too tall. And he has a mustache. My grandmother didn't like mustache. She said people who have a mustache, there is something behind. <laughs> and, uh, and then I thought, and he's not a white person. So, you know, then I realized, wow, I have a lot of judgments. And, um, and then on top of it, he had a drink in his hands. And I didn't know if it was an apple juice or whiskey. So <laughs> said, How can someone be leading a meditation and maybe take whiskey? <laughs> and then Viresh, and it was, we had to wait for a few hours, you know, before he arrived. And the staff had already talked about him saying how great he was. So when he arrived in the group room, it was maybe 12 o'clock at night. And then he said, you know, all of you were new, sit in the front. So I came and sat in the front. And then he said, um, if you don't like that I am black, and if you don't like that I have a mustache, and if you don't like that I'm drinking, um, you know what? It's your problem. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, he reads minds. And then I was <laughs> looking at him. I was just so amazed. And then he said, and now I want you to do what I'm going to tell you to do. And we are going to do love is always the answer. And I looked at those words and I thought, this sounds a little bit like a cliche. Love is the answer, you know, spirituality. It's everybody says that. And then we started to do sessions after session, primal, yoga at three in the morning. Then we had to go and clean the kitchen, which was totally clean, but still we had to remove everything from the shelves, clean them again and put them back. And we didn't sleep. And I was like, but I, I need to sleep. But there was no sleep. So by the time it was dynamic in the morning, I was just like, where am I? And then I realized, where am I? I started to feel so happy. So one with the universe, so connected. And then my hair were a mess because we were screaming and doing yoga and, and everything disappeared what we had done. It was some effort, but it just felt like it brought me to a point where I felt like I was alive for the first time in I don't know how many years. And I was 21 years old. So I was, I should have been feeling alive, but I didn't. And after this session of so many hours, I felt like I now know what it means to be alive and to be with the universe. And then I understood some of the words I had read from Osho. They suddenly became alive for me. And then I looked again on the board, love is the answer. Love is always the answer. And so those words also, they became alive. You know, I, I started to feel to and to feel good and to feel one. And I, I was like so high from it. And uh, Viresh came and he was talking and I thought he's the most amazing person I've ever met. He is authentic, he is uh, strong and he's soft and he's 
giving and he cares for every single person who is in the group. And the only thing I could feel for Viresh was so much love. And um, that was my introduction. And, and then we had to do another session. We had to go to the woods, to the, the farm where we were doing the group. And I went to walk and I walked in cow shit. <laughs> my high and my enlightenment was finished. <laughs> I suddenly was busy with having walked in the wrong thing and having cleaned my shoes and it was terrible. And then I came back and then we had question and answer with Resh. So I explained to him and he said, yes, that's how it goes, you know. <laughs> and he was so normal and so fun. And then he invited every groupie to come to the group room and to listen uh, just at what was going on. And then I realized he was just himself in the group room with the staff answering questions. And so I, I could see what to be authentic meant. And then I realized that all these qualities was what I was looking all along and I had not find it by myself. You know, my past was quite heavy. I had uh, been extremely hurt by things that did happen. And uh, I was crushed to the point of being basically suicidal. And then just by doing this one group, I felt like my life is different. My life is changed. I have a purpose. I know what is my, where I have to go. What I have to do is to listen to this man and do what he says and it works. So I decided I'm going to come to his commune because I thought this is really the place to be. And I came from France. I was in England, between in Switzerland. And then I thought I have to go to Holland. So I told, told my family I'm going to Holland. And they thought I am lost to the sect. And I thought, well, you misunderstand I'm going, but still, their opinion did matter. So it took me a whole year to actually arrive. And during that year, I did groups with many other group leaders, Tiersa, Somendra, Rajan, uh, because London was the place to be. That was where sannyas was happening. So I got all the best therapists from the sannyas movement to come to the groups. But nobody had the power and the authenticity of Varesh. Some were very good in the group room and outside the group room, they were a different person. Some were having trips, you know, cause I was young and I looked good. So some were trying to be with me just because I look good. And they were putting down other women because they were old and, you know, and I thought, no, it's not true. I am inside so dark, you know, Yes, I might look good, and but it's not who I am. I have this darkness to work with, and you know, I so I saw so many trips, and as I, I I stayed very loyal to Varesh because I have never met someone more beautiful than him, more authentic than him, more giving than him. So I arrived in the human university, and I had no idea what I was going into because I was more into the opinion also that the world had to change, not me. So there I was in for a surprise because then I was told by Varesh that I have to change. I'm responsible for who I am and that uh, I have to work. So I did the program. So that's, yes. And then I took sannyas because Varesh was a sannyasin. So of course I wanted to be from the same club as him. <laughs> and the club was Wagwan and Osho. So if that's a club he belongs to, I want to belong to that club. <laughs> Osho, Osho was the president of the club, yeah? <laughs> yes. yes. And then Osho uh, left Pune, so I anyway didn't have time to go to Pune because I wanted to be with Resh. And so Osho left, went to America. And um, so when I met Osho, then it was in America. And then I went to meet him for the first time. Mm -hmm. ah, how was it? Well, when I saw him, I was amazed. 
by his his silence, his calm, his serenity, his yeah, it was like his presence was like almost an empty space, and actually, and at the same time, totally filled with his with beingness. And um, but I must say that I really started to understand. Bagwan Osho, because of the love that Viresh had for Osho. Because just when I would see Osho, I would see that, but I could not, it didn't do something to me. You know, I didn't become different. I didn't um, fall in love with who he is. But when Viresh would talk about him, about Osho, the way he described this love that he had for Osho was so powerful that I could feel that. And this is what connected me with Osho. So I thought, I'm a bad sannyasin because I love Osho because of Varesh. So I thought at some point, maybe I should not be a sannyasin because I am really uh, liking Varesh. And then because of that, I appreciate Osho. I think Osho is the most amazing person on this planet, making so many books, so many uh, amazing, creating situations that are wonderful. But I thought, but it's not coming from me, it's, it goes via Varesh. So I went with Varesh to Pune, and I was dressed with a sari. And so I was so busy with what if Osho would see that I am wearing a sari. Because it was a small space, you know, so I thought he's going to see me and am I, is he going to say, and I'm going to get enlightened just by looking at him. And then I was like, ow, it, it hurts to be sitting and not moving because if you are in the front, you cannot move. But I want to move. And then it was, like, oh, what did he say? I wasn't listening. You know, I was, I was so busy with me that I missed him. But then I looked at Viresh and Viresh was just crying. And he was just in how towards Osho. And then Osho was saying, your tears are a connection, a bridge. You are connecting. The people who love you, they love me. And we are one. And it's the same. And I was like, oh, I am a good sannyasin. I can stay as a sannyasin. <laughs> and Osho could see that and say that, answering my question, because I didn't even know I could put up a question. But I got the answer. And then it was just like, every time I heard Viresh talking about Osho, I fell in love more with Osho because the, he was just, sometimes I was jealous. How can he love him so much, so, so much? And what about me? <laughs> but, you know, this love that he had for Osho was so tremendous that it could only just fall on me. <laughs> and it was so funny to see it in the community because drug addicts will come, tough drug addicts into drugs. And then after being with us for a couple of months, they would say, I want to take sannyas. I also want to be a man <laughs> and follow Osho. And I was like, Duresh had such a way of loving and passing on his love. So has he loved Osho so much? Then we mm. all fell in love with Osho too. And that was well, You know, I I can relate to that. But just for me, as I told you before, was the other way around. I come to Viresh through Osho. When Osho was not in the body uh -huh. more anymore. And he connected to me to Osho again, just listening to Viresh speaking about Osho. Mm. It's exactly what you described. And I feel it through human university music a lot. Yes. Just yes. that, you know, I can really relate to that. It's mm. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we are grateful that you keep there with Hirash's uh, work and also Osho, yeah? Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so. I'm proud to have a Sanyas name, you know. I'm proud to have, have Osho creating this amazing 
amazing, amazing movement and family and uh, connected all of us. And without Osho, you know, I was following Osho to London and that's where I met Varesh. I mean, I'm feel blessed that I have had the chance to uh, be at the right place at the right time. Yes. And meet Varesh through Osho and then meet Osho through Varesh and meet myself through Varesh and through Osho. I guess we had the second question, but you answered already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can go to the third. Divya? Okay. <laughs> How did I become a, a, a human university I service? Was, yes. How did you? Well, it was very clear. The rest is very clear. Anybody who comes here and who lives here and who wants to be here has to do therapy. And once you do therapy, you become an assistant in the groups and then you become a therapist. So Varesh was a therapist, everybody wanted to be a therapist. And if you didn't want, you still had to do it. I didn't want because I was a little bit, um, you know, it's challenging to be a therapist. You go in a group room and you tell people who you are and that you want them to change and they don't want to change. Or they think they want to change but they don't know how to change or they think they want to change, but it's too difficult to change. And you are changing yourself as well. Um, so it's an ongoing change, which is quite uncomfortable. But that was what Viresh always asked everybody who became a staff member to also become a therapist in the field that he wanted to choose. And so for me, what worked for me was the encounter workshops. So I became an encounter leader and then I got the title of Human University Therapist. And I was very proud. That's beautiful, beautiful. You know, I want to go back a little of our last subject that is related to Viresh and Osho relation and love relation, love connection. Yes. I remember once Osho speaking about Viresh in Buddha Hall. Yeah. And I didn't like Viresh first, I see him. It was in Holland. I came from Pune to Holland, to Amsterdam. And I went to a place there, or I think it was uh, Misfit State or something like uh -huh. that, it was called. Uh -huh. yeah. And it was Viresh all over the walls, you know, the photos, the sayings of Viresh all over the place. And then they put Viresh on a video coming out of a Mercedes Benz and doing uh, namaste like osho i thought who this guy I think he is the master is osho it's not him and then i was kind of pissed you know and then i went to Pune, and i heard osho speaking about fish and uh, all that was gone <laughs> all that thoughts you know do you remember that special discourse on osho says that viresh is so humble that he sits there in the back because he's shy also. He doesn't want Osho to speak about him. And Osho says he does a great work for me. Yes. But I... he he's, he hides here because he doesn't want me to talk about him. Oh, yes, I remember very well. It was, um, you know, the night before we were in, um, in the hotel room and uh, Viresh and me, and then his ex-wife came, Suda. And then she said to Viresh, why don't you live here? You don't know what meditation is about. And uh, if you say you love uh, Osho so much, then why are you not here all so much? And that was her questions. And my question was like, Osho has become so big and he has so many sannyasins that it, he's not anymore in touch with the one-to-one -one because he's, he has too many, not too many, but he has so many sannyasins. So the little um, gathering are not happening anymore. It's big gathering with hundreds of people. And we are hundreds of us. And, and then we went to the lecture the next day. And then Osho is saying, I think the Buddha Hall was being constructed, so it was in a smaller space happening at, on that day. And then Osho said, um, where is my Viresh? 
He said, I know he must be in the back because for him, he doesn't need to live here. He sees me once and it's enough for him. And his heart is fulfilled and he he's cries. He's so, he's shy. That's why he would be in the back. He doesn't need to be in the front. And then he, he will be full of tears. And then I turn around and of course, Rush is crying. And then I was like, oh my God, was Osho in the room yesterday? Did someone tell him what we were talking about that I was thinking he's disconnected? He's so connected that he even knows what Viresh is thinking and feeling at the exact same moment without having seen Viresh. And it, it was just like, I was like, you know, oh my gosh, wow. And it was, you know, Viresh's humbleness. Yes, I can only tell you Viresh humbleness has always been there. We were, one time we were in, um, sorry if I jumped to Oregon, but where Viresh <laughs> had received some papers from the office that when he would go to the darshan with the hundreds of people, he would have to give this piece of paper at the entrance. And then Viresh came back and he said, look, I got four pieces of paper and there is a stripe on it. I said, okay, you have to show it tomorrow when we go there. Now, do you know what was this stripe? It meant that you would have sit in the first place in front of Osho. But for Viresh, he was never after like, do I get the first front row? Am I more important than someone else? He was so humble that he thought it was a piece of paper with a stripe because in America, you write one with just a stripe and he didn't think he would be on the first place. And he had four of those tickets, you know, and Viresh was just so humble. It's just like, he naturally would always think like he just got a piece of paper with a stripe. No, do I get now the first place because I'm important and I have a big center and I'm doing Osho's work? No, 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 no. It was so beautiful. His humbleness was always amazing. I mean, he was so humble that when the ranch was about to close down, we received a telex saying, um, I mean, it was not about to close down, but it, it was happening in America, but he received a letter on the telex saying, please close down Grada Rashnish because my organization will destroy your creativity. Viresh was in tears when he received this telex, but he did close down Grada Rashnish which was our commune in Holland. And the next day he opened the commune university. And then the day after he opened human university. Hmm. And um, so we, we did the work for a few years and we started to get uh, the Sanyazins not coming because we were not anymore Grad Arashnish. And some of the people were talking around that Buresh had been thrown out because he didn't know how to do the work of Osho. But it wasn't true. And um, so we got a lot of new people and no Sonyazid, very little. And then after a few years of Osho leaving um, the Oregon and then going to all over the world, and being thrown out from all the country, he finally went back to India. And then we went to India to meet, to see Osho, if we could, or at least be in his commune. And then um, the secretary of Osho came and said to Viresh, I want to have a meeting with you. I want to let you know that um, Osho knows that you have always done his work and that now it's time to come back. So please close down um, your center as such and open Osho Human University because he wants you to be connected again. Now it's good for you to do that. And also he got a few letters from Misfit Cities and he wants you to call them Osho Misfit City, but he wants you to deal with the questions and he wants the band to be called Osho's uh, band. And he wanted uh, all the name to be back full on the Sanyas. So Viresh said yes, of course, to everything. So we came back and then he talked to his whole staff and he said, Osho has asked me to do that. 
And then what do you think? So every staff member had an opinion and they said, now we have built up this whole human university without Osho, we took this photo away and now we have to put it back and then uh, the people are not going to come anymore. And I said, he first listened to everybody, said, I understand how you are all thinking, but um, some were very happy, some not. And then he said, but I'm going to do it because if my master says so, that's what I do. Hmm. And whatever will be the challenge, we will do it. You know, so Viresh had always this humbleness of being um, a disciple. He was never like, I'm a master and everybody has to um, listen to me as the master, the guru. He was just very humble, always. And uh, once when Viresh was in Oregon, Osho uh, invited him, gave him a hat, a few other people got a hat too. And then he said to Viresh, I want you to teach the best therapist in the world. So Viresh said, okay, I will. And then some people thought, oh yeah, the best. You want to be the best. You are, you know, more people put trips on Viresh than Viresh put hat trips, you know. He just was like, uh, if my master wants me to train the best therapist, I mean the best of, of themselves, not better than others, just the best of themselves. So there is has always had this humbleness, you know, this authenticity, this humbleness, this love, this compassion, and this extreme love for Osho. Mm. So this has been like showering all the people that he has met. And so I have had the blessing and the chance and the luck to be with him for so many years yes yes uh, this one thing was not clear for me uh, the first message to close down the center came from osho or came from somewhere uh, someone else no, from, osho. from osho from osho himself yes yes <laughs> okay okay osho taking care yeah. yes Nobody could do something like this. Nobody could say something like this. I mean, anyway, Osho only took orders. Uh, Viresh only took orders from Osho. Great. <laughs> Tell us about uh, Human University. How can people get to know more about it? And what is going on there? Programs, courses, seminars? Well, we have um, like the Russia set up this institute and this commune for people to come and this is their home while they are here. He made a home for himself, for the staff and for every single person who wants to be here for however amount of time they want to be. It can be one hour for a session, a weekend workshop or it can be for ever if you want to be a staff member or graduates. So we have all different program in the commune so you can you are a student first, after you have done a group, maybe. Maybe you didn't do a group or a meditation, but you just want to be here already for three months. And we um, accommodate many different programs. So one of them is the tourist program, where you come only for 14 days and you study yourself. It's like it's a deep washing machine process where you look at many different issues, your parents, your relating with others, your um, way of meditating, your way of working with others, the way of taking orders from others and how you are basically, your happiness, your body, your martial arts capacity. You do a lot of many different things for two weeks. This is tourist program. Uh, another, the next program we have is to come for nine months, but you can split it in one month. You're a student and then you study yourself. So on top of doing all this structure that I described in the tourist, you also work. Work uh, to make food, cleaning the house, painting, doing the gardens, driving, um, answering the telephone, um, doing night shift making security around, making sure that this home is safe and beautiful. And then the work is also used to see who are you? 
because who you are uh, in your meditation, you are the same in your work. You cannot be an enlightened meditator and then a horrible person in the work. So you can work in the group room and you can work outside the group room to become a better person, a happier person, a more loving person. So this is called student program. And then once you have graduated from that program and you don't want to go back to the life that you are, have been leading because you want to take a break from it or you want to study some more about yourself, you become a senior and then you become a graduate and you keep studying yourself and taking care of this beautiful place and you become a therapist and you teach others drug addicts or people who have lost their happiness or people who are physically not anymore so healthy because they forgot how to take care of themselves or they want to just work here and be in a community a buddha field and join the meditations do dynamic do the arm meditation uh, go to parties go to the sauna uh, biking going to the beach so we have a lifestyle that uh, Osho had uh, in Puna One. People were also living in a commune. So this is the base of our human university is the commune. And then on weekends or for a week or for months, uh, we open that to people for studying themselves with encounter, primal, um, meditation, social meditation, Osho meditations, martial arts, healing the body, healing the mind, festivals, um, parties, and work. Because without work, nothing moves. So it's the, the ground for this place and, to move on. And, and the Tenju, yeah? The Tenju, that is, um, yes, Varesh saw that uh, he wanted to have a possibility for the teenagers when they are not going to school that they can come and study to become more connected more happy more uh, learning the thing that they don't want to learn from their parents so they come and learn it with chandrika because chandrika, chandrika is acting like a mother during that time but she's not their mother so they can take on many more things and she has been uh, leading the Tenju program for, I think, 25 or 25 years, or maybe 30, I'm not so sure, but for a long time. So she has a lot of experience. So what is funny also with us is that we have people who have been in the program with me, and in between they make it children. So now they send their children to the teenager program. And then those children became parents, and now they send the the, well, the grandchildren of the one who were with me. So we have generation of people who come already here because we are open since 42 years in Ermontanze, and we are actually 45 years open as a, a center for Osho. So we're good at what we do, and we mm -hmm. love to do what we are doing. Mm -hmm. yes. We, yeah. yes, we know that. I always felt uh, from you people of human university a sense of integrity. Yes. It's very clear for me. So you make whole persons, yeah? Yes. 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 This integrity I could, I could feel always with everyone from human university I met, mm -hmm. all my friends there. And it's beautiful. Tell us about Oshodo. Martial arts, how did it come there? Well, I, I mean, just to, to go back to just what you said, yeah, we, we actually created the school for masters so that people become their own master. And that's why we have all of it. And the integrity of, of Viresh, yeah, he has been bringing that inside of us and making us more and more real. So then that's why we have to relate to integrity. Um, Oshodo came about because one day there was a girl who was living with us in the staff. She went to Amsterdam, she was Dutch, and then she got molested by some people on the street. At the same time, the teenagers from the area where we live in this village started to break windows all over the village and also to us. So Vera said, it's time to do something. 
we need to learn to stand on feet and do martial arts ourselves so that we are not going to be attacked in the streets in Amsterdam, so that our women are not going to be molested ever when they go to Amsterdam, and so that nobody is going to break our windows anymore, because we will catch them and tell them to stop to do that. So I went to, with Suresh to Amsterdam and went to a school of Hapkido, and there was a teacher there, and we did the class, and Viresh said, I want you to come and teach my staff. And um, he came and we did martial art twice a day, every day, twice a day for one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening, every day. And then this teacher had a master from uh, Korea because Apkido master was a Korean master. He was a ninth stan and he had been training the Vietnam forces. So we did martial arts with him and he came to live here and he started to do the martial arts for people who wanted to study full time. And so this is what we did, but we stopped doing it twice a day for one hour because this was, uh, you know, we had no time to do anything anymore. But by then some people became black belts like Rush. I stayed with my blue belt <laughs> because it was quite intense physically. And, um, we called it, Viraj called it Osho Do because it was the way of Osho. Do is the way, so Hapki Do, uh, Judo. Do is the way and Osho is the way of Osho. Ah, <laughs> beautiful. Osho Do. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Also, Prashantam, you got divine healing also into the human university, yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he came for a few years to teach it and uh, he was a beautiful person and he really enjoyed being with Viresh and so Viresh said, hey, do your training here. So that's what happened. And we did divine healings and some of us uh, learned from him and uh, keep doing it. So we still do divine healing. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Yes. Nice. So beautiful divine healing. After all these years of Osho, Viresh, and the human university, what was changed on the way you look at the world? Well, I can say that personally, I was as a teenager thinking the world is fucked up, families are fucked up, society is fucked up, teach uh, the students, uh, the university is boring and what is life about a lot of money because i come from south of france where there is a lot of money in saint tropez really a lot a lot and i saw all those rich people and i thought this is not the way to go and then i saw very poor people and drug addicts and i thought this is also not the way to go and then i saw normal people and i thought this is also not the way to go so i thought the whole world is fucked up and i'm the poor victim what changed is that uh, I realized I seeing the world the way I see it because of not knowing who I am. So I have understood that I have to learn who I am. And this is for me meditation, you know, who am I? And I need also to be able to be excited to be alive. And what is my mission? What do I want to do with my life force? You know, it's, um, and this is for me, I found the meaning in the human university. So by changing myself, I feel like I support the world to change for a better world. And this is also the motto that Viresh had, working with people for a better world. So um, my mission is to make the world a better world by making myself a better person and anybody else around me that I can uh, do it with is better. This is as my life, my world has changed. And this is really, you know, it has been voracious from the moment I met him to the last second of his, his last breath. I can say that it has always been about making the world a better world. And uh, he has always done it in such a 
non-selfish way, you know, and in such a humble way. And with, at the same time, with so much totality, power, intensity, mm. like, you know, 100% is not enough. Here, it has to be more than 100%. So I've learned what I can learn, what I was able to take from Varesh. And so my view in the world has changed and keeps changing. So I want to make the world a better world and a happier world. And together it's better. So that's why I love to have the power. <laughs> Whereas together we're stronger. Great, great. So we like to end our interviews asking the guests to say one word for Osho. One word for Osho. I would say the word friendship. Because for me, Osho was, I can explain the word. Or, yes, yes, sure, please. Because for me, the word is like, um, I remember when, when Osho left his body, Gersh was, First, he didn't believe it happened. And then he asked Ganda to call and to find out if it was really true. And then he was crying, crying, crying. And then he called everybody and we all had to say what we had to say about Osho and what we love from Osho. And then for me, it was like, yeah, friendship. Because of Osho, I, have, I feel that this friendship movement has grown over the world. And because of Osho, I could meet Viresh. And because of meeting Viresh, I could meet all the people I'm meeting here. And thousands of people have been here. And they have gone back to live to Brazil, Karunia, and uh, to all over the world. And, and this is a f the power of friendship. So for me, this is, has been my biggest gift from Osho, has been this friendship that he has naturally set up by doing what he has done. Like I feel the friendship towards you now, you know, mm -hmm. on, with you now in Brazil and with you, Divya, and you have your, this is, this is so precious. So, so much more precious. You know, so, so, yeah, it's, it is. So I've got recently some discourse from Nosho by his brother, Shailendra, and uh, Osho in the very end of his work, he declares he's not a master anymore, he's just a friend. Mm -hmm. he's, and he says that in Urdu, uh, an old language, this is, Mary Handam, my heart, Mary Dost, my friend. So beautiful. I'm going to send it to you. Yes, please. Please. There is a song made out of it. Wow. I send you both. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Prindip, thank you so much. Wow. I'm very touched by all you said and very nice being with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Aí, o que, que vai dizer dessa entrevista linda? Uau. A profundidade desse amor, a profundidade de cada coisa que ela fala ali é única, típica de Viresh. Ai, de força. Viresh fez aniversário há poucos dias. 
foi é. quinta-feira, então, se não me engano, muito. depois ontem do Oxo, né? É. Daqui a dois dias é meu aniversário de Sânias. É. E a lembrança do, do aniversário também do meu querido Sati Bode. Sati. É. Pra Xante estar aqui Você. com a gente. Um beijo para. Beijo. Querida, pra... nós queremos chamar mais grupos de Oxo <risos> para fazer parte da rede do HCO. Então, Caminho das Nuvens Brancas. Tem outros grupos de Oxo que quiserem também passar essa live junto com a gente, é só fazer contato. É... Semana que vem a gente tem as duas últimas, vamos fazer um episódio especial, aliás, Nossa, é uma entrevista, sim. a primeira entrevista presencial da história do HCO, ela ficou uma entrevista de uma hora e meia, a gente vai fazer em duas partes, uma vai ser mostrada na próxima terça-feira, dia 19, mesmo horário de sempre, 20h30, e na quarta-feira seguinte, uma edição extra do HCO para encerrar a temporada, na quarta-feira também, às 20h30. Só porque a gente não quer ir embora, então a gente já vai fazer dois dias seguidos, entendeu? <risos> na, na verdade, a entrevista pede... É, cada detalhe dessa entrevista é rico, rico, rico. A gente... E aí essa continuidade em dois dias também faz todo sentido para que vocês não, não, não fiquem esperando uma semana para a próxima edição. E sim que a gente faça uma coisa mais um dia após o outro. Tá? É imperdível, imperdível. Gente. <risos> gente, a gente vai Sabe divulgar... aquele grupo bom que a gente fala, vai, faz aquele grupo, vai te transformar? A gente faz isso com as entrevistas, imperdível, gente. <risos> Essa próxima não perca, não perca. é um capricho, e, né? Durante a semana a gente vai divulgar, eu não sei se a, div... a gente pode dar alguma dica agora. Pois é, eu não baixei a foto. <risos> Fiquei com medo de mexer na internet, o vídeo estava pensando... Tá bom, assim. gente, a gente Ai, já vai contar. A não conto. <risos> a gente pode contar, sim, na verdade, é, que vale é. muito a pena. Tem mais alguém ainda nos assistindo? Ok, quem está aqui? Sim. Bravos! Guerreiros, guerreiras que estão aqui conosco ainda. Então, a Prachanto tá, a Kilma tá, a Guian tá, a Sávia a tá. tá. Eu quem mais... <risos> a Guian tá. Eu não sei quem tá ainda, né? Que então, tá bastante gente, gente aqui o no nosso início, próximo tá... vídeo vai ser com o Soahá. E a gente fez uma entrevista presencial com ele. E era essa palhinha que a gente ia mostrar. <risos> Mas a gente vai lançar a divulgação agora no decorrer da semana, tá bom? Isso. E daqui Durante a dois a semana... dias, esse vídeo vai estar no YouTube também, se você quiser rever ou indicar, tá bom? Para a gente mandar para a Prendip e para a Ilma Universo também, eles estão bem curiosos quando é que ia sair. É. Gente, semana que vem tem mais essa linda entrevista com o Suarra, então, em duas partes, dia 19 às 20h30, a primeira e quarta-feira dia 13 às 20 e 30 também, ambas no Facebook, dia 10. Dia 10. Aguarde o material de divulgação essa semana aí. É, acho que quinta-feira já começa, a gente começa. Já começa a divulgação. É, a divulgação. E lembrando que dia 5 de janeiro começa mais um treinamento de meditações ativas hoje. Um treinamento incrível, com 30 dias de dinâmica potente, poderoso, para transformar a vida mesmo. Tá? São 14 meditações ativas, online, pelo Zoom. Eu e Sananda, queridos. Tá bom? Sananda, que estava nos assistindo aqui. Tava, tava. Hum. Querido Sá, beijo. Boa Sanguinha, noite. beijo. Beijo todo mundo. Até semana que vem. Tchau, Didi. Tchau, Bi. Até.